That was wonderful. This is what we ride, we live for, you know, is go out, sweat, work hard to some degree, but man, a lot of entertainment out there. <laughs> you know, everything you could ever imagine on two wheels. I never seen anything like that. And they get up close to it, you know, and they have all the little kids saying, hello, hello, you know. <laughs> I started road racing in Northern California in 1962. I was 12 years old and uh, I was a road racer for some time until like when I was around 17 and it threw me out of racing because I had long hair down to about here. And I'd met uh, a band called the Grateful Dead two years previous to that, 1965. They were unknown. And um, I went to one of their concerts, three days, or they played a bike race. Three days they played, a hundred people total showed up for that. So I thought of that as an opportunity, well I'm going to go hang out with these guys. And I used to live right across the street from them, the Haight-Ashbury, and I was best friends with Timothy Leary's son, Jack. And I started to do light shows, which was all this analog stuff. I mean like clock faces with oil and alcohol, overhead projectors and all projected, 16 millimeter film, 35 millimeter slide projectors. And it was a hell of a show. I was 17, I put this whole show together. I had uh, another friend who did it with me and we had a total of 10 people at the show. And we played all the big venues right there in uh, San Francisco. I mean, we were kids, but the market fell out of it because the bands had radio and they could fill a hall with the radio station, but we had nothing because remember this is 1967, 68. There was no video. There were three network TV stations. We didn't have a chance of getting on those uh, network TV stations. And Bill Graham, who was the big rock promoter in San Francisco, he'd said, I don't need you guys. Therefore, I'm only willing to pay you $100 a night. Now, we would burn $100 worth of bulbs a night. This was ridiculous. And at the same time, the whole scene went from some sort of almost like spiritual thing to drugs. And I thought, I gotta get out of this. By that time, a guy in Berkeley had taken the Federation, the Cycling Federation to court Got that rule thrown out, so I was back. I was gonna race. And I started racing, and I became first category in about a year's time. And um, I love road racing. And um, I started uh, riding on the same team as Greg Lamont. And okay, that was my road racing side. At the same time, I had some friends in high school, uh, Redwood High School, Marin County, California. And they, you know, when I was like 17, they took me up on Mount Tamalpais. And the whole idea was you'd go and find the cheapest bike you could get because you were going to kill it on this off-road adventure. And we'd spend, you know, about 80% of our time pushing our bikes up these hills and then come screaming downhill. And the bikes that were in use at the time, oh, were they primitive. I mean, a rear coaster brake was the only brake you had. And to get that bike to slow down, you had to like lock it up and turn it sideways because you had no front brake. And if you feathered that brake, I mean, just went on it softly long enough, it would overheat, the grease would fry out, literally just fry out of there. And you have like a smoking contrail out of your bike. And by the time you reach the bottom of the hill, there was no brakes left. And I thought, I can do better than this. And this was one of these times when like, it was like you had this golden key, you know, to go out into the woods. And where we were in Marin County, tremendous area of open space. And it was all chained off to motor vehicles. So the bike, that was the way to get around. And then um, it was road racing still. And uh, I wanted to be on the Olympic team. And uh, indeed, I was headed that way in uh, 1979. 
I'm at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs for about three months. Then comes down the word, our president, Jimmy Carter, is going to boycott the Moscow Olympics. Wow, forget about it. So at that moment, I said to myself, I'm gonna start the bike company. And I went home and I started this company with my roommate, Charlie Kelly. We called it Mountain Bikes. It's the first time this type of bike, which previous to that was called a ballooner, a clunker, a cruiser, all these other names. I put a definitive name on the thing. And at the same time, we were stupid hippies enough where we didn't trademark it properly. And the thing, within about four years, the word got to be generic. So we lost that, but we gave it away to the world. We're back. We had a wonderful time. Oh, I know. I didn't want to see Saigon Cycles. Best group rides in Saigon. Yeah. Oh, Rod's the guy we've been waiting for to come along here because he understands, you know, what it's going to take to start making the difference here. I mean, we're really, this is just the beginning here. I mean, we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg and you've got those early adopters, those people that are going, that are spreading the word. It's like, hey, you want to have a lot of fun? Come over here. You know, these are the guys, and this is the, the reasoning, is that it's really fun to be fit, it's really fun to be smart, and a bike helps us. Yeah. I think all the elements are here. I think cycling is, is going to come up here. And, uh, you know, it'll take a few years, but I've seen all this. You know, I've watched things go from that big to really become something. And um, we're already, there's a lot of great example all around the world. And um, you know, this is a fabulous country. It's a beautiful place. And uh, get close to it, take care of yourself, and ride a bike. I'll be back. This is a repeat. <laughs>